So what's one of the major things that sends the GDP higher? Government spending is one of the main indications that can lift uh, GDP into a surplus or bring it down into a deficit. Now, the more government spending basing off of fiscal events, like the Rona Rona, um, other things like that as well, like possibly the Ukraine war, it just understand that it could actually lift off your GDP. Some say it's fake, but there's been a lot of instances in the past where the federal government has actually spent a lot just so they can keep us out of a recession and just so they can try to keep our GDP at a stable rate. You can see right here that there's four major components to the GDP. You have consumption, private investments, net exports, and government consumption expenditures and investments, also known as government spending. So there's been a lot of that as of lately. There is a semiconductor bill that is about to get passed. It's already passed the Senate and it's about to get passed with bipartisan support. This is huge because this is a lot of money to be spent on this bill. And you think that's it? That's not it. They're talking about how they're going to spend another 430 billion. By the way, the CHIP Act is 280 billion. They're talking about how they're going to spend another 430 billion on a spending and tax hike plan. They're planning on raising taxes. What? However, you can see that's still not it. You think that's a lot? Well, let me tell you, there's about one more and it's 369 billion dollars on climate and energy. So that's over a trillion dollars right there in front of our face. And that's just over in the past week that we've gotten this news. It's been a few weeks or so with them trying to get bipartisan support. If they get it, which as of right now, it seems like they're on their way to get it. That's a lot of money being spent and the negative rates we're seeing in our GDP. It just might say, screw you from the quarters here on out. I want to keep that in your brain because I don't want you just to get so pessimistic at a time where stocks have gotten murdered. Which brings me to my next standpoint, the tightening cycle. We just got through a tightening cycle. In fact, we tightened again yesterday with our FOMC meeting. Historically, you can see we typically tighten, which is raising rates. And then once you get a pause in those rates, you typically ease into recession. Uh, look at the straight shot up we're in right now. Same thing in 2016, 2015. You actually started tightening in 2014, but still a little bit of turbulation happened and rates had to go up even higher. You paused for a little bit, in fact, for almost half of a year, and then you started easing fast, cutting rates into recession. Where are we at right now? We just hit 1.96% in our Fed funds rate. That's 1.21% plus your 0.75% basis point rate hike yesterday. So we're at around a 2% rate hike, basing off of what Jerome Powell said in the data that we've retrieved. The target for what we're seeing right here on the screen is around 2.25 to 2.5%. So if we're at 1.96% after yesterday's rate hike, they are the Fed is planning on pausing rates or cutting rates in the very near future, which means, hey, we might be on the verge of a recession, but we're not in one right now. We could be in one in certain portions of the economy, but basing off of a technical economic recession, there has to be major things that tear this economy down. And with such a strong jobs economy, jobs reports coming out, I don't see that playing out yet. If the job reports are lagging and in two months we're cutting rates and in two months the jobs are a slop fest then yes we're in a recession like in a snap of a finger but it's all about timing which brings me to my next standpoint if i can bring over the nasdaq real quick i want to point you towards a couple of things so if i can scroll back as far as i possibly can these are the monthly candles actually white lines are tightening cycles the red lines are easing cycles what's one thing you notice one thing you notice, well, first of all, the stock market always gets hurt, always during tightening cycles. <laughs> the stock market always gets hurt during easing cycles as well when you're cutting rates. Typically, you ease into recession, and when recessions hit, almost always you get a massive, massive crash. Now, recessions in the past are here, recessions are here, and recessions are here. So uh, pointing some things towards your brain, you tighten. And then once your rates are high enough, you ease into recession. You tighten. Once rates are high enough, you pause, cut rates or ease into recession. Once you tighten enough, you ease into recession. We just started tightening um, near the beginning of this month. So of course, turbulation is going to happen. It's going to be really bad to the downside for our stock market. But look at this monthly candle 
so far. Just look at it real quick. If we get any more green from here by the end of this month, which by the way is over in like two, two days, right? We're going to get a bullish engulfing candle. The last time we got a bullish engulfing candle was at the bottom of your 2020 crash. Uh, another time before that was at the bottom of your 2008, 2009 crash. If we continue with strength from here on out, what we had just went through was a tightening cycle. It's been a very volatile session. It's been really scary, honestly, because it's been a lot of things said and a lot of things done that would swing the investors out of the market as in fear. What is a recession in my eyes? My eyes, the Fed takes certain procedures, certain measures to poor growth back into the economy because the consumers need it. We're losing our jobs. We are uh, having a very hard time. Our credit's out the door and we need money. We need stimulus from the government. Well, has that happened yet? We just tightened yesterday. It has not happened yet, which means if we were in a recession, this is gonna be a different recession than we've ever faced in history. Now, this brings me to my next standpoint. I know I have a million lines on the screen, but you really don't have to pay attention to them. What am I expecting in the long-term point of view for stocks? Because I don't want to sit here and just preach about the economy. I want you to understand my standpoint as to where stocks could go next. Well, I also don't want you to get too stuck on the max retracements that we were talking about earlier because you had max retracements from like 1880 to 1931 when the stock market was like or the spy at least was sitting at like seven to eight to nine dollars per share it's like really far back right the difference is from then to there you hit max retracement all the way in 1972 so where tracements dating all the way back to 1876 you hit max retracements in 1973 and when you broke over the max retracement above that right when you broke over the first max retracement hit it as resistance hit it as support we extend you to the upside and you can see when you broke over this one it was a ginormous bull market rally which brings us to our next and only long-term retracement the same thing i was showing you earlier right for the spy it was around 550 to 540 uh for the sp X or the S&P 500 futures market. This is showing areas near 5,500. If I can get rid of the drawings real quick, you hit your first retracement. You pulled back as of recently to the lowest retracement. Let me bring it back for you just so it can make sense again. And you can see from here to this lower point down here as well, you've hit both areas, both of them. So you got to understand that there's a lot of upside potential ahead as long as you can understand the value in these setups. But that's the biggest thing, right? You have to be able to understand the value. Zooming in again to this setup, once again, you literally hit the tippy top to the bottom of this trend and you're already starting to slingshot higher basing off of past Fibonacci extensions. So you break above this could be a longer term bearish trend and you need to hit these areas as support. But you already did so in your 2020 crash, your 2018 easing as well. So it's a pretty crazy trend. The reason why your bull market was so strong is because you just sliced above this. Now you're hitting it as support. We want to slice above this again to hit our max retracement. What happens after that? I don't know. It's not up to me. But historically, after all of the past retracements we went after, you can see that you've had an insane bull market rally even after, even after. And now this is where you're at. It seems crazy, but it's the truth. I'm going to leave you guys to it. If you guys enjoy yourself, just putting some things in your brain, food for thought, if you will. If you guys enjoy any of this content, let me know down in the description below. I'm a chart god, a chart master when it comes to technical analysis in the market. I've taught hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of people over the past year or so about TA. I've taught even more about monetary policy. So, so there's a lot of great things that you need to understand in this market if you're going to be in it for the rest of your life. You can't just sit here and time these short-term moves and expect generational wealth. It's a lot harder than that, and that's why the stock market's not built for everybody. You guys enjoy yourself. I'll catch y'all boys. Stay safe out there so I can see you guys tomorrow. Make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to join the Shrewd Gang, and hit that bell as well. Shrewd Gang. Get updated by the second when videos like this come out for your brain, give you some education, give you some entertainment, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Have a great night. The stock market's gonna be right back for us tomorrow, and I'll catch y'all boys. Peace out to... Shrewd Gang.